Welcome back, my sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul, and we are an early retirement debt and mortgage-free couple living in the state of New York. And we show you how to live a full, abundant life while spending less money. How about our yard is in full bloom? My beauty bush, my irises, the sun is shining. It's going to be 90 here today. And that is really unusual for May in New York, but I will take it. You know me and my warm weather. Yeah. Today's video, it's Tuesday, which is viewer's choice or challenge. We are going to be sharing something that both Carol and Catherine had asked. They had sent in a question asking, do we upcycle, do we reuse things, repurpose things? And today we're going to show you two things that we repurposed and reused. One is corn cobs and the other is a water bottle. Paul's going to do a DIY on that. we want to show you how we preserved food that we had bought for our Memorial Day picnic because we were having a picnic on Sunday and I woke up Saturday morning feeling really not well. So we had all this food in the house and we needed to preserve it, make sure it would last till this upcoming weekend now so that we could have everyone gathered then. So we're just gonna show you how we saved money doing that. So many of you ask about our food saver all the time. We're gonna go into a little more in depth on how we use the food saver and how it saves us so much money in the long run. The plastic we use with our food saver, you can buy on sale from the food saver company itself. Sometimes they have buy one roll, get two free, things like that. And you can even look on Amazon for the food saver plastic as well because they run specials too. So we only buy it when it's on sale and when it is, we stock up. The money we are saving with the way prices are on food right now, there's no comparison because you don't want to buy food and it goes bad, it gets freezer burned, it's inedible, total waste. And food prices are really, really very, very high right now. If you do not have a food saver, Ziploc plastic bags work well too. Just make sure you get that air out because air is what hurts the food in the long run. Let's get right into this video and show you what we did with this food that we had bought that we couldn't use right away. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. We're gonna get into the kitchen. The other day we had showed you the dole fruit we had gotten frozen from ShopRite for 99 cents a bag. And I wanted the mixed berries, so they gave me a rain check, which I asked for because I told them, you don't have any mixed berries. And they were like, no problem, four per variety. So now we got these home. We're going to food savor them the exact same way that we did the other fruit. But we figured if you didn't see that video, we'll just do it again real quick. My interest is to see how many blackberries and raspberries are in this bag because I'm hoping it's not just blueberries and strawberries. So are you ready? Look at that blackberry. Oh my goodness. Raspberries. Let's food savor these real quick. This, this is a fine for 99 cents a bag. Okay, I just dumped this out real quick. I just want to show you how beautiful this dole fruit is. Oh my goodness, look at these. I'm not kidding, I'm pretty darn impressed. Now I know a lot of you have been asking what model do we have. This might be an older model, but here it is, model numbers on the top right here. Food Saver, this is the exact box it came in. It's been working great. It's a wonderful device. So I cut a piece of bag Hopefully this is going to fit all of those. I think it will. But you have to seal one side because the bag... So I will seal this first. I just lay it across the sealing strip, hit seal, and when the light turns off, the bottom will be sealed. The light is off, so let's take a look. There's the seal all the way across. So now let's put in the fruit. 
And our last bag going in. And there's our bag of fruit, frozen. What I like to do is try to flatten it out so it fits in the freezer as a package and not just a big bump. This way we can fit more food in our freezer. Fold the end of the bag in, close your lid, lock it, and hit vacuum. So here we have our fruit vacuum sealed in the bag. When you're going to use some of the fruit, you want to cut with a scissor very close to that ceiling line and as straight as possible. Remove the fruit that you're going to use and then put it back into the machine. Reseal it. You just don't want to tear a hole in this thing. You got to make a nice cut along that line. Take your fruit out, reseal it, and you're good to go until next time. You're not wasting plastic this way either. So we have our corn and the water's boiled. I'm going to put the corn in for about two to three minutes. And this is a great way to freeze corn. We're gonna let it cook for two to three minutes, then we're gonna cut it off the cob and we'll show you what to do. These cook for just about three minutes. I'm going to take them out. Put them back into this container here until they are cool enough to handle. And then we'll show you what we do from there. Paul is going to show you his extra special way that he cuts the corn off the cob. This is a regular bunt pan. What I do is I hold the corn in the little center of the bunt pan and just take a sharp knife and come right down. And this does a great job. It stabilizes the corn. Look at that. And it falls right into the bowl. I'm going to measure out a piece of bag. This machine has a built-in cutter. You just basically pull the bag through, slide that over, and there it is. So let's get this sealed and we're going to seal up the corn. So now we're going to put one cup in this bag. And now for the second cup, a nice little bag of fresh corn. Let's seal it up. Place it in the machine as square as possible. Fold the little lip over, close, lock. And then what I like to do again is just smooth out the corn. I'm gonna push it to moist. And, back. and there it is. All sealed, goes right in the freezer. We're gonna date this too, by the way, so that we know when we packaged it today. Also, you got to remember this little tray comes out so you can clean it. Look what's inside. Can you see that? The corn water. I like to empty it each time because uh, it'll get filled and then you'll spill it. Do not throw those corn cobs away. I took the water that we had originally boiled the corn in for three minutes and we added that to the compost. It is just a great way to break down your compost. It adds nutrition to the soil. So I started with fresh, clean water here. I took the six cobs, put them in. I cut up, there is a carrot in here. I know there, there is some of it. I cut up a carrot. I cut up some celery leaves, a little black pepper. You can add garlic, parsley, whatever you'd like and we're gonna make ourselves some corn broth. There is so much flavor still left in these cobs. Please don't waste it. I'm gonna cover it now, and I'm gonna boil it for about 30 minutes. 
our broth came to a boil and then I let it simmer for about 40 minutes. Look at the color of that broth. Now I'm gonna strain the cob out. I waited for the broth to cool so that I could strain it. Look at the color of this. Do you wanna talk about a rich vegetable stock? And those corn cobs would have gone in the garbage. Now what I'm going to do is, it's just tepid, it's not even that warm, but I am going to stick it in the refrigerator to cool completely. I will put it in one cup portions and freeze it. But what a great way to use up those corn cobs. A lot of times buying larger packages of items saves you money. And this is a perfect example. Black Bear Natural Casing Beef Franks. These are some of the best hot dogs you can buy. And if you buy them in a bigger package, they cost less money. But now we didn't have the Memorial Day party. So what I want to do is preserve these. First thing I'm going to do is take them out of the original wrapper. I love that these are all like together. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's just fun. So what I'm going to do now though, is take each one of them apart. And I'm going to put them individually on this cookie tray. Now why not just take the whole package and freeze it? Well, by doing this, after we freeze it, they will be frozen individually. When we food saver it, once you open that food saver bag, these hot dogs will come out one by one. There's no waste, there's no defrosting, freezing, defrosting, freezing. You're only gonna take out what you need. After you take out what you need, you just reseal the food saver bag. Now you can do this in a regular Ziploc bag as well, just making sure you get as much air as you possibly can out. Our hot dogs are nice and frozen. This is gonna work great. Paul's gonna give them a quick seal. So they're all sealed. We're gonna date them and pop them in the freezer. And now when we have our post-Memorial Day picnic next week and our 4th of July picnic, we are all set. And these hot dogs will be as fresh as the day we bought them. This is another item that we froze immediately. I was going to make a double chocolate trifle for our Memorial Day gathering. So I had made the chocolate cake a day ahead. Unfortunately, it didn't come to pass, so I knew I wanted to get this in the freezer. And I knew we didn't want to food savor it because it would have squished it a little bit. Not that that would have been bad. I'm sure maybe it would have popped out once we did it, but I didn't want to take the chance. I took this out of the freezer to show you it has already been frozen. I cut the 9 by 13 chocolate cake in half, and I just took two strips of plastic wrap this way and this way, and I put it in between the two layers, folded that up, just make sure everything is covered, which it is, and then I just put it in my lock and lock container so it doesn't get smushed and into the freezer it goes. And when I need to make my trifle for my post Memorial Day party this weekend, I can just defrost it and cut it into cubes. And yes, I promise I will share my double chocolate trifle recipe with you. It is so good. So there we go. Another item saved. So that was just a bunch of hints and tips that we implemented in the last couple of days to ensure this food would stay fresh, that when we took it out, it wouldn't come out in one frozen lump. We'd be able to only take out what we need, reseal the bag. Works perfectly. I know we did a video on the corn cob broth probably over a year ago. But that is something with corn coming in season, I hope you remember. You could have added onions, spices, however you would have liked to have flavored it up. But what an amazing vegetable broth it makes. So that's one way, Carol and Catherine, that Paul and I reuse something that would have gone into the garbage. So we hope that's helpful. Now, Paul 
is going to do a little DIY. You know that we love our birds and we love our hummingbird and we have a hummingbird feeder. We make our own food, but we have had a serious ant problem in the hummingbird feeder lately. So Paul, being who he is, said, let me look on Amazon and see what they sell. So these sell for what on Amazon? About $11 to maybe $22. Yikes. Well, Paul made it, I think, for like a penny. I don't even know. With trash. So we're going to turn the camera around and Paul's going to do what we hope is a really helpful DIY for you. Our hummingbird feeder turned into an ant feeder. And when the ants get inside this hummingbird feeder, well, guess what? Those hummingbirds aren't coming back to drink. And with the price of sugar, you don't want to waste any of it. So I'm going to show you a neat trick where you can take a pop bottle or, or a water bottle and make what's called an ant moat. This will keep the ants out of your hummingbird feeder. To make my ant moat to stop the ants from going into the hummingbird feeder, I'm going to take this piece of coat hanger right here. And this little coat hanger, I made a loop at one end. That's going to hold the feeder. And then I'm going to make a hole in that cap and insert this rod into this cap. To do that, I'm going to use a small soldering iron. You could use a wood burner, anything you can pick these up at the hobby store. And basically what I'm going to do is make a small hole, not too big, in the top of the cap. That looks like that. Now what I want to do, unscrew the cap, and I'm going to take my coat hanger and insert it into the hole. There it is. Now we're going to make the moat. So you take a utility knife and carefully make a small hole in your bottle. Once you get a starter hole, you can then take a scissor, go into that hole, and start cutting. And there's your moat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add hot glue to this to seal the moat so the water doesn't run out. And just want to keep it straight until it cools. Now that it's cooled, I'm able to take the little cup that we made, the moat, the ant moat, and we're just going to screw that in place just like that. And now we're going to make a curl on the top using a pair of pliers so we can hang this from the tree. And that's it. Our hummingbird solution is homemade. We use a quarter cup of sugar to one cup of water, heat the water on the stove till it comes to a boil, add the sugar, shut it off, stir it, and let it cool completely. Then what we do is add it to our feeder. Don't use food coloring to make it red. It's actually harmful to the birds. Any extra solution you might have Put it in a sealed container in your refrigerator to keep it fresh. And only use enough solution for the first week because if it gets too hot outside, this solution will turn rancid. The birds will refuse to drink it. Don't fill this whole globe with sugar water because half of it's gonna go bad on you. We'll put the lid on and take it outside. So now we're gonna fill the moat. just like that. And here's our finished product. Now, fingers crossed, this will work. It's not leaking at all, so Paul did a great job. Wasn't that great? And let me tell you, Paul, do we have any ants in our feeder right now? Not yet. Yay! <laughs> so it's working. We take that cost of feeding the birds as part of our pet and entertainment budget, honestly because they are an entertainment and they're part of our family, those little winged beauties. They really are. That is something that we allot a little extra money for. Today's question of the day. What is something that you always have in your freezer? I know so many of you may have a specialty item that you keep frozen that you can just pull out at any moment and cook and eat. And that's what's so great about a freezer. You pull it out, you defrost it, and it's ready to go. So please share with us, what is something economical that you keep in your freezer all the time? 
all year round. It will not only encourage Paul and I, but it will also help our viewers. And that is what we are here. It's all about helping each other. The comments down below are priceless. They are worth their weight in gold, honestly. Don't forget our Tuesday's Viewer's Choice or Challenge, where you send to our email, frugalmoneysaver at gmail.com, your ideas for a video. What would you like to see us do a video on? But please make sure you send it to our email. Please don't leave it in the comments down below. It just helps me to be a little more organized. So thank you so much for being here with us today. We ask that you give this a thumbs up. You have no idea how much those thumbs up help us. They really do getting our videos out there, having YouTube recommend our videos. If you found it useful, if you found it helpful, which we really hope you do, please, if you haven't subscribed, click that button and come on in, be part of our frugal family. It's the best one here on YouTube. We ask you to stay well. We ask you to be safe. And above all, we wish you blessings until our next video. We'll see you on Friday.